war in Iraq, poverty, sex, sin, and age, modern dilemmas challenging the faith. And since we're in the midst of the holy season, we want to know, do American Christians walk the walk or just talk the talk? We're tackling the burning issues with some of the nation's top ministers and asking, what would Jesus really do? the streets of Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, and Houston, what would he really say, and more importantly do, about what he saw? The Bible says faith without works is dead, but conversation without action is just lip service. The Christian agenda isn't the same as the Republican Party platform, and it doesn't exclude Democrats. God's agenda knows no party. But look, as a Christian author and the husband of an ordained Southern Baptist minister, I've grown tired of the unwillingness to broaden the faith beyond a couple of hot button issues. So we decided to put the tough questions to those who proclaim to speak his truths, Rick Warren. T.D. Jakes, Paula White, Jerry Falwell, and others. They speak to millions daily through their growing ministries. Tonight, they speak to you. Welcome back. We just heard from the Reverend Jerry Falwell. My next guest has a very different view of the world. He says people are being turned off by national religious leaders who present a one-sided and shallow view of what it means to be a Christian today. We welcome the Reverend Frederick Douglas Haynes III, pastor of Friendship West Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. Pastor West, Pastor Haynes, glad you're here. Glad to be here. Thank uh, you. Let me be up front. I attended your church when I was in Dallas, so I want to go ahead and get that out. Um, uh -huh. As a pastor, are you turned off by the agenda, the views being presented by national religious leaders to America? Well, I am bothered. I think it's quite ironic that on this weekend, as we celebrate the passion and crucifixion of Jesus Christ, that a fresh Jesus has been crucified on a cross of identity theft, uh, in that Jesus basically is associated solely with uh, same-sex marriage. He's against same-sex marriage. Jesus is uh, pro-life, but his pro-life stance stops uh, when we exit the womb. And so I'm bothered by the fact that we have not really taken Jesus, uh, we've divorced him, as it were, from the reality of the day in which he lived. Jesus basically uh, has been de-radicalized, sanitized to the point where he is totally divorced from the social, political, and economic realities of his day. Uh, how can we do that when Jesus spent his time as a part of an oppressed people under Roman occupation and oppression? You cannot divorce Jesus from that context. And, and speaking of that, uh, your issue is that when you look at police brutality, when you look at racism, there seems to be a different perspective from white pastors, black pastors, southern pastors, northern pastors, why are folks not united on those issues when they say one God, one Jesus? Exactly. When the Jesus that we serve, when we really follow him and follow him through scripture, he was guilty of busting boundaries that limited people because of the color and color of their skin and the culture they found themselves in. The famous parable we all know is the parable of the good Samaritan. Don't forget, Samaritans were despised and discriminated against, and yet Jesus gave the starring role to someone that was despised and discriminated against. And so what I'm suggesting is when we look at Jesus in in context, we don't con ourselves into limiting Jesus to just certain pet moral issues. The budget of the United States is a moral issue. This war is a moral issue. Racism is a moral issue. The fact that nine million children don't have health care, that's a moral issue also. We saw churches and uh, Christians respond uh, with Hurricane Katrina, but do they, in your estimation, continue to care about poverty? Is that going to be a part of the agenda? Great question, because the sad thing is Katrina pulled the covers off of the continuing issues of race and class in these yet-to-be United States of America. In so doing, for about a month, we were energized. Our hearts went out to the fact that the invisible poor had become visible. But the sad reality is that after so much time has gone by, I heard such words as compassion fatigue. Even coming from persons who follow our Savior, who had enough compassion to die on a cross. He never did grow weary of dying for us in order to save us. Are you confident that Christian leaders will unite around a Christian agenda leading into next year's presidential election? 
I'm prayerful that we can do that. I believe that if we understand what Jesus was all about, what would Jesus do? He'd give the most to those who have the least. What would Jesus do? He'd be concerned about the fact that we're in a misbegotten war. No wonder we have no exit strategy. Jesus says the truth shall set you free. And so I believe we can come together as Christians if we put Jesus back in context. Put him back in context. I promise you, we'll follow him and we'll follow him together. Speaking of following him, if Jesus walked in your church and he said, Frederick Haynes, let's walk, let's go do some work, where will you go? What would you focus on with Jesus? With Jesus, we'd go to the heart of the hood, right down the street, uh, where there are apartment complexes that are riddled with crime and poverty and crack houses. That's where Jesus was when he walked this planet, and that's where he continues to be through those who are faithful to him, empowered by the Holy Spirit to make a difference. Jesus would be right there with us, uniting in holy wedlock, salvation and liberation for community transformation. Well, what about those who say Jesus would not be involved in poverty? politics. Agree or disagree? I disagree totally. Because Jesus, of course, Jesus was very political, but again, when you have a neo uh, descetic view of Jesus that basically divorces him from the political realities of his day, again, you've taken Jesus out of context. When Jesus went into the temple and tore the place up, turning over the uh, tables of the money changers, that was a political act with, without question. He died on a cross. Only Rome could hand down a, a, a sentence of execution by crucifixion because crucifixion was Rome's way of saying to any would-be revolutionary this is an example of what will happen to you if you try to play that game with us and on Sunday when Jesus broke out of that tomb in resurrection power and glory don't forget Jesus broke through a tomb that had been sealed by a Roman sealed stone that's political Jesus is political as a matter of fact check out his opening statement Jesus said uh, I'm anointed to preach good news to the poor, set the captives free, heal the heartbroken. He's political. Well, we'll see what happens. I'm quite sure Faith will be a part of the campaign, but the question is whether people will actually force the politicians to address the issues that you address. I certainly appreciate it. Folks, Thanks. Pastor Frederick Douglass Haynes III, Friendship West Baptist Church. When we come back, Rick Warren, he's author of the best-selling book, The Purpose Driven Life. He's made a lot of money preaching and teaching, so why is he giving most of it away? I don't think it's a sin to be rich. I think it's a sin to die rich. I think God intends you to use it. Money is to be used and not loved. Pastor Rick Warren on money, war, and politics will ask him, what would Jesus really do?